Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a complete and detailed Lynette guide. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the newest free to play four star Animo support, Lynette, who we all got for free with the Fontan update. Lynette is a nice and versatile four star Animo option for many teams, especially for Fontan content, where you can use her to help nullify certain enemies' mechanics thanks to her Usia aligned damage. I'll cover exactly what that means, what Lynette actually does, while also covering the best ways to build her artifact, weapon, and team wise so that you can get the most value out of her through this one detailed video. Before before we begin though, as always, I want you guys to know that I stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested. With that being said, let's get right into it. Alright, starting things off, what does Lynette actually do? Well, generally speaking, she's a 4-star Anemo support, or mostly support, who can have some utility because she's an Anemo, but also thanks to her abilities and the fact that she can apply Usia aligned damage. In fact, her elemental skill, Enigmatic Faint, is an ability that can be pressed or held, and if you press it, it's a very simple hit of Anemo damage, with a honestly surprisingly high scaling, and then if you hold it, you can run around for up to 2.5 seconds, Similarly to Yalan, but only being able to mark one enemy and then hitting that enemy with the same enigmatic thrust for some Anemo damage. Also, when you use your skill on Lynette and your thrust hits an opponent, you will instantly heal 25% of your max HP and then lose 6% of your current HP per second for 4 seconds. While this would add up to 24% current HP, since it is current HP and not max HP, this means that it'll scale up based on how much HP your Lynette has every second, so you actually do end up gaining HP from using your skill, even though you lose a lot out of it. This just makes it to where the lower HP you are, the less you'll lose, always gaining 25% of your total HP when you use it, and then losing a bit afterwards. This is mostly just nice for the synergy that it gives Lynette with some Fontaine artifact sets and weapons, which we'll cover later in the video. Also worth noting that you still lose this HP even if your Lynette is off field and do swap out of her. This ability has a 12 second cooldown and will give you 4 particles, but what's important to note is that your Surging Blade, which is the Usia aligned damage you will do when you use your Enigma Thrust, will have a 10 second cooldown. This means that even if you reach reset your elemental skills cooldown with something like the sacrificial sword, your surging blade won't get reset and you can't apply this Usia aligned damage twice in a row. Now, since Fontaine just came out, what Usia and Numa aligned damage is, isn't really known to everyone. It's a new mechanic that is very useful against certain enemies, kind of disabling some of their mechanics, like you can remove the new boss's shield, for example, or some other things. As while I am still learning how this mechanic works in more detail, it is something that is useful against new Fontaine enemies, which I assume will also appear in the abyss. Moving on though, Lynette's elemental burst is this cat box that she summons, which will deal AoE damage and do a few things. First of all, it just will constantly deal this Anemo damage to everything around it and swirl with standard ICD. What other special properties you need to know about this ability though, are that first of all, it can taunt for its whole duration, which can be a form of defensive utility. Now in Genshin, taunts are oftentimes clunky and inconsistent, partially because enemies can sometimes not see them or can already start an animation or can actually just destroy the ability that taunts. But this ability, since it can't be destroyed, it's an elemental burst with 12 seconds seconds can actually be one of the better forms of taunt we've seen, even though it still isn't consistent. With that said, it can definitely be very convenient though, on top of the damage that it deals, and also the fact that it can infuse with an element that is swirlable, being either Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, and then start dealing damage of that element. This is nice for a bit more elemental application, being a property that a lot of Anemo abilities share. The infusion priority is Cryo, Pyro, Hydro, then Electro in that order, but usually you can manipulate what the Boggle Cat box will come into contact with, although it can be inconsistent at times. This ability has an 18 second cooldown with a 12 second duration, meaning roughly 6 seconds of downtime with a 70 energy cost, which you'll have to work around. Do note that this elemental burst does not snapshot, meaning that if any of your buffs expire throughout its duration, then the burst will also get worse, making it have a bit worse synergy with supports like Bennett or the Marie Chaussée set, which we'll cover later in the video. Other things to note about Lynette are that she has two passive talents, one that will give you attack to all of your party members based on how many different elemental types are in your party, giving you anywhere from 8 to 20% attack. This is nice, a bonus thing that she gives not nearly as strong as something like Kazo's elemental damage bonus or even Sucrose's elemental mastery, but the attack can be quite relevant as a nice bonus, lasting 10 seconds after you use your burst. Lastly, for your second talent, Lynette will give her own burst 15% more damage when it does infuse with a specific element. With all of this in mind, you generally want to be leveling your elemental skill and then your elemental burst as the two things to prioritize for your talent priority and then ignoring your normal attacks. With that said though, Lynette is a character who can greatly change based on your constellations, with her C6 actually giving you a use for your normal attacks if you want to play her that way, so you could level them in that situation. At a baseline C0, I think Lynette performs fine, not as good as some of the strong Anemo meta supports like Sucrose or Kazua, but a unique and free one who can still swirl for you, still give you buffs thanks to the Vernessa Venner set and her passive talent, while also having some pretty okay single target damage, and especially Usia aligned damage, being something that I think will be very relevant against Fontaine enemies and in Fontaine content. She can also be useful for exploration thanks to her hold skill, and also does get better with constellation 
constellations, which I think we're going to talk about early in this video, as even just her first constellation, her C1, can give you a bit of grouping on her elemental skill, which can help her feel quite a bit nicer to play. With that in mind, I actually want to start by talking about her constellations very early in this video. As I said, they can be quite a big deal. While I don't think they're needed, I think they give you a lot of convenience and different play styles you unlock the more constellations you have. In fact, her first constellation, as I said, will give you a little bit of grouping if you do hold your skill. You have to hit an opponent that has a shadow sign, and then it'll do a little bit of suction to enemies nearby, which you can see through footage of me after I unlocked it, where it's not the most grouping. Obviously, it's nothing in comparison to like a Kazuo hold E or any big form of grouping, but it is kind of convenient. It's a little bit of suction that definitely can add up and can help her feel that much nicer, especially when you consider the fact that you might be able to use your skill more than once if you're running something like a Sacrificial Sword or even have her fourth constellation, which will give you a second charge of your skill. Again, another nice constellation for some convenience and also damage. With that in mind, your second constellation is also quite nice, giving your elemental burst more damage and also more elemental application. Her C3 and 5 will just give her more damage by giving her more talent levels. And then lastly, her C6 is very similar to Kazuha's in that it will give her a Nemo infusion when she uses her elemental skill while also gaining 20% Nemo damage bonus with both of these lasting for six seconds and giving her a brand new playstyle. Well, she still won't be like an insane main DPS option. Obviously, it just makes it to where you can on field her if you want to. You can play her as a driver in something like a taser team where, yeah, there can still be better options, but she can be a viable one who can swirl for you and also have some more personal and Nemo damage, which is quite nice. A four star character unlocking a new playstyle is a nice thing for people who want to main them, but not something that I think is like super important to go for or anything. I really think her early constellations, like even just C1, really is nice for quality of life. But as I said, her being a flexible Nemo option who has Usia aligned damage makes her a pretty nice option even without constellations, despite the fact that some of her constellations do definitely help her performance. All right, now with all that out of the way, how do you actually want to build your Lynette? Well, starting things off for your artifacts, the sets you want are relatively straightforward. First of all, as a generic Nemo support, you almost always want the four piece Verdescent Venerer somewhere on your team. If you are playing any DPS or even support character of an element that you can swirl, being either Electro, Pyro, Cryo, or Hydro. Because of this, you'll typically put your Lynette on a Verdescent Venerer set in a reaction or elemental damage focused team, as she's one who can swirl and proc its effect quite consistently. With that in mind, if you have another Animo character on this set in your team, or if you want to maximize her personal damage, then other sets can also be viable. First of all, you can go something like the four piece Noblesse Oblige for burst damage and also team attack, or sets that focus more on her damage, like four piece Emblem if you need a lot of energy recharge, four piece Golden True for a bunch of skill damage, or four piece Marie Chaussée for a huge amount of crit rate. Except keep in mind that since your burst doesn't snapshot, it may be a bit difficult to have good uptime on this, unless you're on fielding your Lynette, which you typically aren't, as yeah, your HP will drain through your skill, but the stacks only last for five seconds and you don't snapshot the buffs when you use your burst, so you won't have the best uptime on this effect, but it can still be a viable one. Other options include mix and matching offensive 2B sets or going for any of the niche 4P sets for specific teams, being Lava Walker for Pyro, Thunder Soother for Electro, and Blizzard Strayer for either Cryo or Freeze, where Lynette can also equip the set, but typically in those teams, she'd want Verdescent Venerer to swirl and be supportive, and that's usually what I recommend for most teams, but any of the offensive sets can work as well to maximize her personal damage if that's something you're going for. All right, now with the artifact sets out of the way, what stats are you looking for on Lynette? Well, generally, what you want is first of all, enough energy recharge to make sure you can use your burst on cooldown to get more swirls, more damage, and also more elemental application of whatever you infuse. It's also nice for utility, so you really want to spam it, but the exact amount of energy recharge you need to actually be able to spam this burst will heavily vary based on your team, how many Enemo units you're running, and how much energy you're generating. Generally speaking, a good amount to look for is around 200, but keep in mind that it can be quite a bit less than this or quite a bit more, ranging from like 160 to 220, but 200% is a nice range to go for and then see if you need more or less. Do keep in mind though that a lot of these numbers assume you have at least a viable team or a weapon that can help give your Lynette and your team some energy, which we'll obviously cover in the weapon section, but you may need quite a bit more ER or quite a bit less depending on how you play her. Once you have enough ER though, you typically want to be looking for offensive stats like crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent to maximize your Lynette's personal damage. Elemental Mastery is also viable to increase your swirl damage, despite the fact that Lynette doesn't really have any scalings or buffs based on her EM, it's mostly just because swirl is a very strong reaction. With that in mind, generally going for attack and crit will be better as your scalings are quite high. Because of this, you want to look for either energy recharge or attack on your sands. ER for a lot of players if you don't have enough, but if you do, you can go for attack, then a Nemo damage on your goblet and crit rate or crit damage on your circlet. If you don't have a good crit build, you can also go, as I said, for EM, looking for that on your main stats. All right, now moving on for Lynette's weapons. This is a very important part where you can actually gain a lot of value and help your Lynette be a lot stronger by picking the right one. In fact, there's two types of weapons you can pick, either one that gives you and your team some energy or one that will give you more damage. Generally speaking, 
speaking. With the exception of some five-star swords being quite good if they're available and not used on other characters, I think going for an energy sword like either Sacrificial or Favonius is the most recommended option for most players. This is because it can help make your Lynette very easy to build, not need as much energy recharge, and also give more energy to your entire team. Now, concerning the Sacrificial versus Favonius, I guess, question, I want to start by saying that they're both good options for Lynette. Sacrificial can give you another charge on your skill, and her skill does a lot of damage while also giving you some Anemo particles, whereas Favonius can give more energy to your team by generating white particles on a shorter cooldown whenever you crit, while also giving you a lot of ER. Both of these options are good, however, I want to say that while both of these do get better with refinement, Sack is the one that gets significantly better with refinement, to the point where at R1, it is a lot less recommended than a sword like Favonius, because its effect can only occur once every 30 seconds, with only a 40% chance of proccing, so it's really not nearly as good as when you start getting it refinement rank 3, 4, or especially 5, where the cooldown will line up more with your rotations, and also have a higher chance to proc. And in my opinion, since so many characters want Favonius weapons, or Favonius sword for even a lot of supportive sword users, this can make it to where you may have a sacrificial sword available, since it's less needed on less characters, in comparison with Favonius, meaning that you can use your fav on someone else, and sack on Linny, but again, this depends on your refinement level, and what you're looking for, as Favonius can help give more energy to your team, if you're not just looking for Anemo particles. And so, for energy, I think both of these options are great. If you don't have them, or want to run another, you can use something like Skyward Blade, the new Fishing Sword, or even Festering Desire, which can all be great options, with the last two being good for increasing your skill damage, and also giving you energy. For some more offensive weapons, there's actually quite a lot that you can go if you don't want an energy weapon. First of all, any of the generic 5-star swords are just good, Mist Flitter and Jade Cutter being the two best, but even the other offensive 5-stars can also just be stat sticks if you have them already leveled. Also, Freedom Sword is a weapon worth mentioning as one of the best supportive options for sword users in general, and Lynette is one who can make use of its high base attack, the personal damage you're gaining, and also the elemental mastery if you are swirling, while also and especially giving your team some damage when your Lynette procs reactions and can stack the passive. All of your party members will gain attack percent, as well as normal charge and plunge attack damage, which can be great as a supportive weapon if you have one lying around. With that in mind, there's some new Fontaine weapons that are quite good for Lynette. First of all, the Battle Pass one, Wolf Fang, can give you a lot of stats and a lot of skill and burst damage as well, which is quite good for Lynette. Not too far behind that is the new Fontaine Blacksmith Sword, Finale of the Deep, which can be a big attack percent stat stick. Overall, there really are a lot of options. The new Blacksmith Sword is a great free-to-play one, or the new Fishing one if you want energy, but I do highly recommend going for either Sac or Fav, unless you want to go for an offensive option, and maybe already have enough energy on your Lynette and in your team. Alright, now when it comes to Lynette's teams, as an Anemo support and an Usia aligned one at that, she is very versatile as just the flex option in teams when you want an Anemo damage buffer who can reduce the resistance of enemies through the Verdessa Venera set, run a supportive weapon, give you some attack through her passive, and then also have a decent amount of personal damage. Again, she will typically be picked in a team over some other characters in situations where you want this Usia aligned damage, whereas outside of that, she's just a pretty decent free-to-play option, a 4-star that you can get for free that you can use if you want an Anemo support. Because of that, she is very flexible and will follow the team pattern of any Anemo character, where you can run them as a flex slot in a team, typically with a DPS character of an element that you can swirl to really maximize the utility that you gain. Because of this, she can really fit in like any of those teams, where you can use her as an Anemo support who has good skill and burst damage. You can also use her for some defensive utility. The taunt isn't the most reliable thing, but it is quite nice, it is convenient, and also the elemental infusion can also help your team get a bit more uptime of whatever element they're trying to go for. Because of that, as I said, I would recommend running her in elemental teams, preferably those that you can swirl to actually reduce the resistance of whatever element you're going for, with her being very flexible in that regard. As I said, she is no Kazua, but as a 4-star free-to-play option, she can be a decent flex slot. For some more specific synergies, I wanted to mention that you can use her in some Anemo teams, like you can play her with Farzan if you want. She doesn't really offer any buffs to your Anemo damage, but this can help her personal damage, on top of the fact that she can give a decent amount of energy, so if that's something you want to do for your Lynette to feel stronger, then that's something that you definitely can do, again, to increase your Lynette's Anemo damage. If you have Lynette C6, she can be played as more of a main DPS, you can do some unique things like swirling Pyro with Bennett's Pyro Infusion, or even running her as a driver in some teams like a Taser team, where you'd be running characters like Beto, Singtro, Fischl, alongside your Lynette, a team where Sucrose is typically the best option, but as I said, you can definitely feel free to use Lynette in that role, as she can swirl both Electro and Hydro for you, if you do have her 6 Constellation unlocked. The same can be said about some Hyper Bloom teams, if you can manage to infuse Electro into your burst and your attacks to proc some Hyper Bloom. These aren't as recommended, but they're unique ways to play her at C6, where she won't be the most meta option, but you can definitely make it work. Generally speaking, a very decent free-to-play support, who I think shines in content where you want that Usia aligned damage. I know I'm repeating myself, but it really is that, on top of the utility she gives you, and just being a pretty well-designed character in my opinion. I like 
like her design and think she's quite satisfying to play, so I am pretty happy with her. Despite her not being the most like broken option, she's definitely a pretty good four star we got, especially in Fontaine content against Fontaine enemies. And so yeah, we finally got the two magicians from Genshin's first trailer, and I am pretty happy with them. Linny is a very strong DPS actually, and Lynette is a quite versatile and emo support, pretty generic in that regard, but she has a lot of personal damage on top of having this Usia mechanic thing, which I think is quite interesting, especially for Fontaine content. I want to know what you guys think about this and Lynette in particular in the comments down below. So do let me know. As always, though, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.